how are we all doing? How are we all doing? Let this go on for a sec. Hopefully, hopefully, this goes better than last night. Last night was a little bit iffy because last night the Wi-Fi decided to um, just not play games with me. Just didn't work with me. So give me a second. Make sure this sounds okay. All right, all looks good, all looks good. It looks like we're not having any issues this time. And Wi-Fi is a lot more sturdy. Didn't mean to do that, by the way, put the Ainsley Harry avatar on there. So, how are we all doing this evening? How are we all doing? It is looking good, it is looking good. It's looking good. I don't know what the issue was because I recorded a video straight after the live and it uploaded like that, like, it, my upload, I've got good Wi-Fi for that. So I don't know if it was a Wi-Fi issue or a camera issue or still echoey. Yeah, no, I don't think that's an actual issue. I think that's just because this room is so echoey of where I'm sitting. I, I think that's just the actual, how it's going to sound, my man, unfortunately. Um, I need to up so I upgrade it with a mic before Christmas, but... um. Let's just say it didn't, um, it wasn't exactly what it said in the tin. Let's just put it like that. Shout out to Ali Drew as always first. Even at the bed, how are you, my man? How are you? Hope you're enjoying this, Andrew. No, it's live. So the way premieres work, right? I normally premiere midweek report. So when you see that go live on a Wednesday, it normally means that the video is pre-recorded, but there's a live chat, if you know what I mean. So like, you can have a little bit of interaction in the chat and stuff like that. But in terms of these, these are 100% live. 100% live. Um, William Jones, good evening, G-Man. Watch all your videos, really enjoy them. Keep up the good work. Thank you, my man, I appreciate that, I enjoy that. Um, don't worry, I've got plenty more. You know, I've been um, trying to get daily vids there, well, hoping to anyway. Obviously some days it's gonna be easier than others. Um, I've got a Fury vid coming out because I done my video as soon as I finished live here. Then I went and I watched Tapman's video and he actually pointed out some things in his video that I didn't know about from Mark Kriegel. So I went and I looked them up. August, end of August last year, there was some interesting things. And also there was interesting things about the date for Fury versus Usyk because he was talking about the fight being agreed then and statements that they knew, like Fury was saying, like, we know it's not going to happen. No, we know, but saying that they basically reporting that both parties knew the fight wasn't going to happen in December. However, you still have people saying, well, it could have happened in December. From what I'm reading, it was agreed 50-50 back in August, you know, a verbal agreement, so to speak, and that it wouldn't be happening until the new year. They actually talked about the Super Bowl weekend. I've got something planned for that, so don't worry about that. Hey, the G-Man, glad the live is working today, was working yesterday. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad, man, you can join in. Um, the live yesterday, I don't know what happened. Like, the weirdest thing was, it looked fine on my end. So, the camera I'm looking at, obviously, I can see myself in it. From what I can see on my end, it looked absolutely fine. But I keep a spare here, just to um, just to view. So, I keep a spare one here, just so I can make sure it's looking. it looks okay from the outside looking in. And it was just pausing a lot. And I was like, why? Because it's not doing what... When you see what I'm seeing... It just looks fine. But yesterday it was like, I'd say two words and you'd hear the words, but I'd be just frozen in time almost. So it's it's weird. Salute my man. Ah, look who it is. Look who it is. Look who it is. Look who it is. My man, my good friend, Chris Andre. How are you, my man? Mr. G, man. How are you, brother? Hi, everyone. Man, Chris Andre. I think I speak for everyone when I say we are looking forward to a technical analysis of Liam Smith. I'm more so, more so. I look forward to your videos, man, but more so. Yard Baturbiev. I'm looking forward to that one. Anyone else, just Chris Andre when he does his prediction and his preview for Yard Baturbiev. It's like ears open. And because he sees things that we, like even like, I would consider myself quite a good, decent eye for spotting things. And he, see, he sees things and I'm just like, where did you, like, how, how? Uh, salute to Chris Andre every time, man. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. Um. Hmm. I should have probably changed the title of this, but I already did it yesterday. Um, I don't know. I hope, I, I'm going to keep the glasses half full attitude and say it will happen. 
but I don't know. I mean, the whole Tyson Fury situation is, and of course his fans will defend it. Of course, at the end of the day, like, do I think that Fury is the bigger star out of the two? I do personally. So, would it be an abomination if he got? Although apparently it was agreed fifty fifty. If it went, we'll say six. Uh, sorry, fifty five forty five. I don't think it would necessarily be that bad. But if you're talking about lion's share, are you implying that Fury wants 70-30, 80-20? If that's the case, then that sounds to me like he just wants to price himself out of it. That's kind of what it sounds like to me. Now, obviously, they haven't announced any figures or anything like that. But if the fight's not happening in Saudi and we're hearing prices like that, just saying, just assuming we are, that's not good. It's a good sound. Thanks, my man. Never echoed before. It could be just on your end, though, mate, because for me, like, when I turn the volume down, right, like, I'll mute. Yeah, it probably sounds a little bit more echoey than normal, but I don't know why that would be. I don't know why that would be, because it's no different than sitting over there. I just think the room I'm in is quite an echoey room. This is living room I'm sitting in is quite echoey. There's high ceilings and everything. Uh, big up from NYC, all the way from New York. You sound fine, mate. Thank you. Uh, what's going on with Lucy? Lucy. Mate, I just hope we get this Usyk Fury fight. Fine. Us Fury finally responding to Usyk. Has he made a statement? Oh, that's a good question, MVG. Um, personally, personally, if Chris Eubank Jr., as I expect him to do, beats uh, Liam Smith and Billy Joe Saunders does come back, I'd be saying to Eubank, go down the Billy Joe Saunders road because I think that fight is more winnable now than it's ever been because Billy Joe Saunders would have been out of the ring for two years. He looks a heavyweight. I mean, he looks an, he looks an absolute... Let's be fair. He looked an absolute mess back in the summer. And I reckon that Whatever's left in him is well and truly gone at this stage. So I'd say Eubank will win. I personally, if they announced the fight for this year, I'd be making Eubank favourite. Back for round two. Yeah, and besides, it was so late in the evening yesterday that by the time things came around, there was news break and it was other views I wanted to do. I was just like, the live wasn't meant to happen. You know, sometimes it's just, you just know it's not meant to happen. The live just wasn't meant to happen yesterday. You know something, I haven't actually seen it yet, but I have heard that, Ben, that a lot of people said it was entertaining. I'm probably going to watch it. I've got a video planned. If I get the thumbnail in time, I might get it up tonight, if not tomorrow morning. Um, I also need to get the midweek report thumbnail done for tomorrow as well. So I'll probably watch it some stage this evening. Top of the evening again. Take two, mate. Take two. You find son of sorts, as always. As always. As I said last night, swords is a grand spot to live. It's a great part of Dublin. It's only a few minutes from the airport. It's a big town. It's 20 minutes from the city. Hey, G-Man. Big up the cloud. Fury just called out Usek. Fight surely has to happen. It's going to be interesting. What did he say? Anyone have any? I'll try and see if I can see. As he, What does he say? Big old Tyson Fury. Let's see. Let's go and have an old look-see and see what he tweeted. Or did he say... Um, Oh, he made a video. All right, I am. Um, I should be okay to play it. Let's have a listen. Right, so that's what Tyson Fury had to say. Okay, that's interesting. All right. Did anyone else hear that? Because I'm pretty sure that KFC jacket is defo coming out. Oh, yeah, we love the, uh, we love that. We love the KFC jacket. And the BS from Fury continues, nothing changes. Money doesn't matter to Fury, remember? Of course, yes, it doesn't matter. He's a man of the people. He wanted to fight Anthony Joshua for free. Instead, he fought Chisora on an all-time record pay-per-view price. Yeah, like, honestly, like, 
I seen on one of Hatman's videos the other day, and I was just I just happened to have a glance through the comments, and someone said, and this tickled me, it really did, that if Fury said the sky was green, his fanboys would defend that. And I agree. He, they probably would. They'd be like, that's clearly green. It's clear, clearly green. Clearly green. The sky's clearly green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The sky's clearly green. If it doesn't happen, it's all down to Fury, but of course, he doesn't care about the money. No, he doesn't care about the money. No, of course not. Of course not. Of course not. Of course not. He doesn't care about the money. Oh, yes, yes, yes. What the F is the deal with Huey Fury? Would be fun if you don't uh, if you don't have any ideas. Hmm. You see, like with, with Huey Fury, right? I could do a WTF video on him potentially, but like, has he? I suppose he's had. Hmm. Hmm. I could potentially do one. I think there's a lot more to Huey Fury though to come, but that's not a bad idea, MVG. That's not a bad idea at all. Hmm. That's not a bad idea, actually. What the WTF? You see, a lot of their videos to be quite long. And I don't know if I get a lengthy one with Huey Fury. I might actually. That's an interesting one. I think what would be interesting about the WTF with Huey Fury would be the pullouts. You know, the amount of fights that have been put to him that he's either pulled out of or he's not followed through with, etc. That's not a bad show. AJ still in the UK. No announcement. Oh, no, man. I know. Please. Just, just. No, please. Please, 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 please. Just imagine if there was no politics or broadcast issues in boxing, the fights we get. It It's that argument again of if we had a one governing body, like the UFC, for example, how would it work? Because obviously the UFC, all the big fights happen. You know, if number one and number two are fighting in the UFC, it's happening. There's no ifs or buts. It's happening. Whereas boxing... So much more politics, you know, broadcasters, promoters, even sanctioning bodies to, to a lesser extent. It just causes all this to happen. And at the end of the day, it's hard to, like, I've been able to, I wouldn't, uh, they're not necessarily hardcore, but in my time, I've taken UFC fans and I've at least got them interested in boxing to, to an extent where they're a lot more knowledgeable than they were. And they've even said that, you know, if it wasn't for you, I would have missed, you know, potentially great fights because they only watched the really big ones, which is nice to hear as well. But they always say, it, and I can't really argue with it. It's like in UFC, if you know, say, Khabib is the best and McGregor is number two, just saying, you know, they're going to fight. You just know that's going to happen. But with boxing, it's a case of you could have the best and the best at Spence and Crawford. And it's just the case of will it, won't it? How many years is it going to take? You know that sort of way? Like with Amir Khan, Kel Brook, it took them 10 years until they were already past their peak before they got in the ring. That KFC jacket is defo coming out before the fight. That was funny. That was funny. Coming for you, rabbit. I know. I'd, I'd like. Announced it. Get this fight over the line and just let's get it done. I just want this fight so goddamn bad. Oh, man. He didn't say lineal for once. Yeah, he didn't. He loves the lineal. The lineal heavyweight champion of the world. Yes, George Foreman was the lineal heavyweight champion of the world until he got beat by Shannon Briggs. So lineal, if you <sighs> lineal. These fights nearly always happened back in the day. Well, yes and no. I mean, like, a lot of the times fights ended up getting pushed back. I mean, Holyfield and Tyson is a good example. They were meant to fight in 1990. He got beat by Douglas. They are meant to fight in 91. Tyson went to prison. It was 96 before they finally ended up fighting. You know, so it's not always a case of... I think with a lot of people, they think, you know, these fights happened instantaneously. It's not always the case, even throughout the history of boxing. I mean, look at a good example would be Tommy Morrison. He got beat by, I think it was Michael Bent before he was meant to... Was it Michael Bent or was it... Um, yeah, I think it was, I think it was Michael Bent before he was meant to fight Lennox Lewis. That was meant to be a run out. He got beat and they ended up fighting years later when Morrison was way past it. And obviously we know about Tommy Morrison and, you know, what, what happened to him and what, what probably was happening to him in the ring. Um, you know, crazy really when you think about it. I was reading the other day. Yeah, I remember seeing that, and I remember that came out. I always thought that was very dubious on the farmer's part because he was pulling that story out just when Fury beat Wilder in the rematch, and I always kind of felt like mm, that, you know, because people will try and do that to try and get a bit of attention. Explored. I always found that one very suspect from the farmer, truth be told. 
I noticed Eddie and Frank still haven't announced their full spring schedules. Yeah, I know. Hearn only announced the February 18th card, which is shaping up not to be a bad card, to be fair. But Warren has only announced the yard card. And he's announced a card with David Adelaide headlining. I think that's I think that's February middle or the end of February. I'm not 100 percent sure. It's in the York Hall, I think. That actually looks like a fun little scrap, to be fair. But yeah, I I I'd prefer to know like cards in advance. I really would. Because um obviously I'm hoping to get over to at least well, I did one last year and I'm hoping to do maybe three or four this year. Obviously, like finances and all that jazz, because I'm I'm working on some other projects outside of here that need money as well. So I got to keep an eye on the finances. But um, if it all goes well, um, I hope to get to more of these next year or this year, next year, this year. There's a rumor about Joyce versus a, a Jagba. Wow, really? I would make Joe Joyce heavy favorite in that fight. I'd make him heavy favorite. I think that FA Jagba, he, you know, when FA Jagba fought in, was it 2020 or late 2019 against, oh, that journeyman who dropped him. Can't remember his name. He's a, he's a known journeyman as well. Cannot remember his name. I remember at the time thinking, okay, they need to put the brakes on him a little bit. And realistically, he probably needs a good two years of work. Well, we've had two years of work and he still looks just as stiff and robotic as he did then. I think he Joe, Joe Joyce had put him on the jab. I don't think F.A. Jagba would really... F.A. Jagba would fight the way he did against Sanchez, but maybe to even lesser extent because Joe Joyce is probably a bigger puncher. I think Joe Joyce would intimidate him with his power. Joe doesn't need to be careful because a Jagba's right hand is no joke, but I think that... Yeah, I, I, I think that he would beat him I think he beat him Joe Joyce would probably stop him as well no I don't to be honest with you mate Pat McCormick's with Matchroom now um, he obviously went with Pro Bellum at the, at the start and we all know well Pro Bellum hasn't officially gone yet but I think the writing was on the wall with Pro Bellum when you know the whole El Chapahan situation happened a good example Lewis versus Bo never happened Eddie Futch famously stated that he held that fight back originally because Bo wasn't ready for Lennox Lewis. And, you know, I, I go back and forth. I think about that fight a lot. I go back and forth in my head about that fight. And I just think if they did have fought, we'll say in 93, 94, 95 even, how would it have gone? I think Lennox Lewis would have beat Riddick Bo. Probably on points, but I don't know because I'll be frank, right? One of my favorite fighters to watch I just love watching Riddick Bow. Oh man, look, I could go back and watch Riddick Bow all day. I love watching Bow fight. But I gotta be realistic. I gotta look at it objectively and say probably Lennox Lewis. Like Lennox like you see, I look at Bow's inside game and I think just how good that inside game was. Like Bow was so talented. I mean if Bow had kept himself proper in shape and he'd been a lot more dedicated than he was, you know, he had some tough fights, but man. Bo was just, when he was on it, but see, Bo had a very bad defense. You know, if you look at Riddick Bo, he got hit a lot, a lot, when he didn't need to. He had a very poor defense. No, 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 I'm not having that. No, it will. Can't say I've tried Bo. I've never. I've never tried it myself. Fury seems intent on taking the easiest fights possible these days. Always been very clever and careful in his picking of fights. More so now. And Usyk, let's be forget, turned 36 today. So, realistically, you know, father time is undefeated, as the saying goes. And I hope to God, oh, I hope to God that he's not waiting for him to just age that little bit more. Wasn't Martin Bacoli supposed to sign a big deal with a major promoter? It's all gone quiet. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what. And Martin Bacoli, again, I thought he was still with Matchroom, was he not? And he's done nothing since that Yoka fight. Done absolutely nothing since then. And that was a great win. It's gone quiet since Brayshaw win. And honestly, like, I picked Tony Yoka to win that fight. I was very impressed with Martin Bacoli, even though he came in a lot heavier than I'd like to see him. He looked rejuvenated in there. He really did. Off topic, but thoughts on a new way vacating his 118 pound titles. How far in weight 
if for open weight do you think he'll go? Maybe he'll he'll top out at super featherweight. He's 13 0 in April. Remember that he's 13 in April. Um I agree. I would say super feather would be the limit. And expect him to struggle. Probably a featherweight. He'd probably still be okay at Bantam. But after he gets the feather, expect him to not look as devastating as he has. Expect him to not look as devastating as he has. Usek won't 50%. Fury will not give 30. Truth be no one. No one has taken bigger risk of heavyweight than Fury. Three time champ, or sorry, Wilder, three times. Vlad, away both, underdog, four times in his career. I give him all the credit for the Vlad fight. He wasn't the underdog in the rematch, as far as I was aware, nor was he the underdog in the trilogy fight. In the first fight, Wilder took that fight because they thought it was an easy touch. There's no ifs or buts. They thought that fight was an easy touch. I give him the credit for that. I do. You can't take that away from him. You know, I give him the credit for beating Klitschko. I give him the credit for beating Wilder when he was clearly not. Well, he drew. Unofficially drew at Wilder. He officially drew at Wilder. Say, but it was, it, he won the fight. We know he won the fight. We know Fury won it. I give him the credit for that. But I don't give him the credit for saying he's the greatest heavyweight of all time when he doesn't have the greatest heavyweight of all time's resume. I don't give him credit when he says things like, I'm a man of the people and money means nothing to me. You, you fight there. If he wanted an easy run it against someone like a Chisora, if he'd have fought him in a non-title fight on standard BT, I wouldn't have complained. Lots of fighters, lots of all-time greats have done that. But he didn't do that. I like Baturbi of saying his 100% KO ratio is luck. It's not luck, man. He is probably the most heavy-handed fighter in boxing. You know, pound for pound. He is probably one of, if not the most heavy-handed. And by the way, 78 in the building, if you could, lads. And lastly, smash the like button. Help your boy out. Really appreciate that if you could. Bo was easily one of the laziest, ill-disciplined fighters I've ever seen. And that's why when you go back and look at him, you know, when you see Bo at his best, you just think to yourself, if you had the discipline, if you had that discipline, how far could you have gone? Because Bo was just, he was tremendous. No one's going to, he was tremendous. And if he had the discipline, man, he could have went so far. He could have went, like, and he went far, but he could have just, the echo was me, didn't realize I had, ah, there we go, there we go, there we go, yeah, see? I do sound fine, I sound fine. Laurent Richards, Demetrius, Andre, who are you picking? At this stage, still, probably Andre. Definitely. Jerome, uh, sorry, Lerone Richards. Hope I didn't say Jerome. Lerone, um, he left match room for better opportunities. And what has he done? I'm just asking the question. What is what, what has he done? He's done absolutely nothing since. So I'm waiting to see those opportunities. Uh, hoping Akeem Ennis Brown can make a comeback this year and hasn't given up boxing since he was robbed. Of the British title. Wasn't that against Maxwell? Sam Maxwell. Yoka versus Takam. Yeah, I think that it's it's a strange one. Apparently they're mates. I think there was talk about them fighting a couple of years ago, wasn't there? Or am I mistaken about that? But I think there was talk of them fighting a few years ago. And Yoka ended up going in a different direction. Um, It's going to be interesting to see how he looks. You know, coming back from the loss. Because he really didn't look. I mean, how they managed to score that fight. Like, that was really one of the... That is a perfect example of a fight where they tried to rob another fighter. How they scored that fight in majority decision to Martin Bacoli, I don't know. Because it should have been a wide, unanimous decision to Bacoli. Um, and we need to see how Yoka looks. I mean, he, he looked shaky as hell to me in that, you know, in that Bacoli fight. Very shaky. Extremely shaky, so... Lewis was 23 at the Olympic final, Bo 21. Lewis had a maturity advantage, signif significant at that age. Mm -hmm. And Lewis, didn't he go, didn't he fight in the previous Olympics? And didn't he lose to Tyrell Biggs in that? Or am I wrong? Was that the Worlds? Or, I know Biggs beat Lewis in the amateurs. I'm not sure which one of them was, though. If it was, I know it wasn't that Olympics, but it might have been the 84. All right, people. You good, G-Man? I am, mate. I am. You got to chuck that in there. Uh, I saw they announced, yes, yeah, should be these, um, I don't know, I don't know. 
Um, I, I thought Yoke at one stage was looking pretty good, but as of late, he's been looking a bit kind of... Now, I know he's had some issues going on in his personal life, so maybe that's affected it, but he's looked a bit dodgy, all right. He said in the interview that it's it's luck, not me, by the way. Fury was underdog against Chisora in the first fight. In the first fight. Wilder close odds and Wilder close odds. It's also not Fury's fault that Vitaly retired and Hay ducked him twice. Well, David Hay pulled out of the fight because it, and it's fair to say his body was breaking down. Not his fault. It has to be said, not his fault. And Vitaly, I mean, Vitaly retired in what, 2013? Fury was nowhere near. Fury was, they were still at domestic level in 2013. So I don't know why you bring a Vitaly into it. Joshua uh, to welterweight versus Khan. Oh, yeah. The battle for Amir Khan's wife. The battle for Amir Khan's wife. There you go. Do you remember when that broke? I remember thinking, this isn't real. Like, someone is, someone's got into Amir Khan's account and has hacked it because this ain't real. And mind blown. It was real. Do you think Sonny Edwards will end up signing up Matrim? Be a good signing for Matchroom if he did. I think he's still with Pro Bellum if memory, if my memory is not mistaken. I think he is still with them. But a very good deal, a very good sign, I should say, for Matchroom if he does, because Edwards can talk. Edwards is charismatic. He's very good on the mic. And of course in the ring. Tremendous talent. Tremendous fight with Sonny Edwards. Really impressed with him. And it makes the Bam Rodriguez fight a lot easier. Hearing uh, Ritson, oh yeah, Ritson Davis could be announced tomorrow. What are your thoughts? Um, O'Hara Davis has really disappointed me the last couple of years. Um, I thought that in like O'Hara Davis when he lost the Catrell, it was a snooze fest. Let's be real, could have went either way. And then he had that shaky fight against Vasquez. I thought he lost it, but he got the nod. And then he won that Golden Contract Tournament, which again. The opponents weren't the greatest. I think in the semi-final, he beat a career super featherweight. And then he beat McKenna on a close decision in the final. And he's done nothing since then. So, I think O'Hara Davis is the better of the two. And Ritson, how many miles on the clock has he got now? Because that fight against Ponce, he took a fair old beating. So, I think both guys, it's a crossroads type of fight, really. The winner can carry on. The loser is really going to have to take a long, hard look at themselves. Fury versus Jake Paul announced February 25th. So, Suffolk Boulder, whereabouts is it going to take place? Does do they? I've seen they've been talking about that online, but whereabouts is it saying it might take place? It's big up to Sean Hodge boxing every time. Hey, G-Man, big up to you, man. And lead a ball guy, G-Man. You see uh, Nicola Hopewell got an IFL interview. And just think, you were the first to give her an interview. I know, man. I've I seen her share, but I haven't watched it yet. A big up to Nicola Hope. She's fighting February 10th. 10th or 11th. I know she's fighting up in... Is it Doncaster near she's fighting? Yeah, big up to Nicola Hope every time. Had her on here many a time as a guest. Great guest to interview. I'm glad to see she's getting some recognition as well. I've seen it yet. Yeah. Okay. Bo was a force of nature. Uh... A manic, a, mish, a menace at his peak will always remember his ill discipline cost him and getting beaten off Galata before he started going to the, go, to the groin and got KO'd. Yeah, he was taking it. And he was better in the first fight, realistically, Bob, than he was in the second fight, even though he was lighter in the second fight. Thoughts on Callum Walsh, future champ from Ireland, possibly. Uh, fight's tricky to watch because signed by Dana White, only shown on UFC. I haven't really, I don't really watch much UFC and I'm not really familiar with Callum Walsh, so I can't really comment on it, mate, to be honest. I don't know who he is. Um, is it bad that I think Jake Paul will destroy Tommy Fury? I'm hearing it's been signed. I'm hearing it's been signed if Fury doesn't pull out. I think Jake Paul will beat him too, but I don't. I think it'll be competitive though. I think Fury will have his moments, but I think Jake Paul will win. We'll do a watch along for that, lads, 100%. Oh, it was about the famous fan man. The famous fan man. He's dead now, isn't he? I hope Tommy KOs Jake. He should be uh, do, but I'm not confident. Well, Tommy Fury's never shown himself to be a big puncher either, so if he's to win, I'd probably pick him on points. Um, do you follow? Not really, mate. I'm more a fan of British Premier League football. 
I wouldn't really watch much Scottish football. Off topic, what are your thoughts on Eubank Smith? Um, no, no, you can ask me. See, these live streams, the topic that I thought I have in the team doesn't really... You can ask me anything. As I said in my prediction, I think Eubank is going to win. The more I think about it, the more I think it's actually pretty run of the mill fight for Eubank, realistically. So, um, prediction video is there. You can go and watch that. But I think Eubank is going to win, long story. Uh, Vitaly would have beaten Fury. I'm just saying. Vitaly was tremendous. He really was. Vladimir had the more talent. But Vitaly, he was the warrior. He was the fighter of the two. I had a lot of respect for Vitaly Klitschko. Tremendous fighter, tremendous talent. And I'd love to have seen Klitschko in today's era. I don't think he would have gone. I don't think he would have dominated. I think he would have taken L's. But I think he would have. It would have been crazy seeing Vitaly in today's era. AJ would prefer Amir to his wife. Can versus Josh would be like Macho Man versus Hulk Hogan. Okay, it would actually. That's a good actually analogy. Fury had beaten Chisora one and Johnson, both Vitaly's opponents before 2013. He was on the route to the BBC. He beat two-time champion in Cunningham, not domestic level. And again, your point being, again, your point being is very different to go from now. That would have been an ancient Vitaly as well. Vitaly was near the end. So your point being, he beat Cunningham, yes. He beat Johnson, yes. And he beat Chisora, yes. That's not to say he would have beaten, at the end of the day, as I said, and Vitaly is different altogether to Vladimir. Do you really think Vitaly would let himself get his head jabbed off at long range by Vladimir for 12 rounds? Oh, man, that's a good question. Um, I really don't know. I really don't know. It's a shame that Michael Hunter's been screwed over so much this last year. And he has, because at the end of the day, like... He lost a year of his career waiting on this Huey Fury fight. I don't know who clean, uh, who he's, his manager. I think he's getting his name wrong. He's going to put him in there with. Hey, G Man, I was thinking the other day, what's going on with Ted Cheeseman? I've, okay, I'm not going to go into it, but just in response to that question, I've heard a few things on the DL about Ted Cheeseman. Um, I'm not going to go into it, but um, yeah, I don't see him. I don't know if he's retired, but um, I don't know if he's going to be fighting anytime soon. Do you think... No, 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 no. Oh, oh, no. I thought you said do. I think it will be. Do you think it would be pay-per-view if it was on Sky? No, no. I don't think it would have. I don't think it would have. See? So. When Hay faked his way out, whether Hay faked his way out or not, Fury wanted the fight and was a big underdog. It's not his fault he didn't get that name. But you accused Hay of ducking him. So how did he fake an injury? He missed a couple of years of his career. And when he came back, he looked a complete shell of himself and he was injury ridden. So your logic is, is that David Hay somehow ducked Tyson Fury and faked an injury, missing what over two years of his career at a time where he was in his 30s, where he couldn't afford to miss over two years of his career. When he came back, he looked a shell of himself because he could barely get through a camp without his body falling to pieces. And yet somehow... You interpret that to mean he ducked Fury and that he either faked an injury, despite the fact that we saw what happened when he fought a live opponent in Tony Bellew. As soon as he tried anything, the body just instantly went apart. So somehow you interpret that to be a duck or a fake. And again, people say, why these Fury fans, you know, it's just, it's funny. I think Lara will probably win, but it's going to be a hell of a fight. Manchester Arena. That's going to be interesting. Thoughts on the Klitschko brothers for me. Top 15 of all time, just based on skill, size, and athleticism. If they were around today, I think they'd still be top. Well, Vladimir, no, I don't think he would. I think Vladimir would still be, oh, he'd be a top heavyweight, don't get me wrong, but he wouldn't be dominating like he was in the 2000s, you know, in the early 2010s. He wouldn't be dominating like that. So for Vladimir, no, again, I don't think he'd be doing that. But Vitaly, maybe. Because that was a schooling. Popped up on YouTube recommends the other day uh, the build up for Joshua versus Ruiz one. And as a massive AJ fan, I really missed the days of Joshua looking confident before a fight. Yeah, I mean, the build up for that fight was, wasn't really like 
it, it was the, the com- it was the almost like Ruiz lulled them into a sense of security, a false sense with the belts and thank you. And uh, we saw what happened. Lara's dangerous fighter. Rich stay away from him unless they let uh, Josh use his head button to use his head in the third fight. Any ideas on what's happening with Huey Fury? Is he still with Sky? Yeah, he is. Apparently he is anyway. I haven't seen any announcement or anything like that. Um, I was surprised they put him... I was surprised they did put him on the Eubank undercard in a comeback fight. Did they actually do that? Is Huey Fury fighting on that card? I didn't think he was. Is he legit fighting on it or, or what? Because I actually didn't think he was fighting on that. If he is, that's strange. Very little notes or anything about that. 10k soon, man. I'll tell you exactly, right? I'll tell you exactly. I'm, oh man, soon, soon. I need 118 subs. 118 subs off 10k. 118 off 10,000. 118 more and I've got 10,000. And I'll be a, I'll be a happy G. That's how many off we are. 110, or sorry, 118, and I'll be a I'll be a very happy G. Yeah, I ain't saying that. Cal Smith going out in March. Opponent, Boatsy probably, maybe. Scott Fitzgerald has a sad case because even if he comes back, I don't think he. I I, I think that. Sadly, the best of Scott Fitzgerald is well and truly gone. I, I just don't see, I don't see him coming back and having much success. Um, when he made that fight, when he had that fight on the undercard of, Chis- of Chisora versus Parker, he did not look right, even in the interviews. And um, it's sad because I really do think that Scott Fitzgerald had something, maybe not world level or anything like that, but. Nah, I think that he's done. He's done, probably. Would you put Wadley in with Huey Fury? Probably not just yet. Not yet. I wouldn't put him in with Huey Fury. Um, Fabio Wadley, as tenacious as he is, I don't see him getting to Huey Fury. Well, he did say he was looking to get him out in March or April, so hopefully he gets a decent one. To be honest with you, though, mate, I'd say realistically, if you're talking about... Joe Joyce is probably not going to be anyone decent. They're probably going to want to sit on that mandatory. So I reckon that's what they'll do. David Hayes' body literally fell apart. Yeah, exactly. You know, this is a guy who had, what was a shoulder surgery and stuff like that. You know, that his shoulder was Like, his body was literally falling apart, even as far back. Once he beat Chisora, that was it. His body literally started falling apart. So for someone to actually go out and say he ducked Fury, and that he faked injuries. You're hardly going to fake an injury, right? And what miss... See, David Hay was at the stage where he was getting up there in age. I think he was in his early-ish 30s, or like 32, 33. So you're not going to... You can miss two years, two and a bit years of action when you're... Well, more actually. Wasn't it nearly four years of action? We're training a bit. You can miss that when you're in your 20s. It's not really that big a deal. You're not going to do it in your 30s, right? You look at David Hay and the injuries clearly taking a toll. Because he hadn't been through a proper camp pre the Fury camp until 2000 and what, the end of 2015? So his body literally hadn't had deteriorated so much since then. You could see it when he fought Mark Demore, even to his stance was off. So for someone to say, like, oh, that's just Fury ducking, you know, he's ducking Fury and this, like that, you say, get the hell out of here, man. I'm pretty sure one of the fights was called off due to a cut. Uh, a rumor that hey cut his own eye. This was t- this was before his couple of years layoff. Yeah, I remember that, and I think again it was down to probably more so down to the shoulder injury and stuff like that. I think it was a shoulder that took him out. I always thought that hey may have been juicing uh, stress me uh, may for legal reasons, and his body later broke down due to the- well David Hay for several reasons. I mean one. He put so much excess weight on, so much in terms of muscle weight that his body just wasn't designed for. So if you have a, like if you are carrying that much excess muscle, because he got to be carrying a couple of stone extra, and you're putting yourself through a punishing camp, and David Hay was explosive, so he trained very hard, so much impact on the body. It's inevitable that's going to happen. I don't think he probably expected to break down the way as it did as quick, but it was inevitable. 
Fury will destroy you, sick. Yeah, I think Fury will beat him as well, but I'd like to see the fight nonetheless. Thoughts on, he on Josh Taylor. How does he get on in a catch-up rematch? Well, personally for me, I think he beats him. I think that Josh Taylor... The only thing I'm worried about is that it's it's another year. The longer this has gone on, the more it's going to favour Catro because it's longer Josh Taylor's going without making the weight. So it's going to be difficult for him, I reckon. I reckon, anyway. Uh, my pick is for a Eubank win on... Probably on points. Probably on points. Joe Joyce versus Otto Berlin in the spring. Hmm. That's interesting, isn't it? It's not a bad show. I reckon they might not even go for that. They probably might go for someone like a Pulev or someone like that. Yeah, well, more I can see if it's an even 30 yet, believe it or not. I know he looks it, but she's not even 30 yet. So he still has a bit of time. But, yeah, he's really fallen off. I think he's just injury-ridden. If you do a watch along for Yard Paterbi, yeah, now I'm going to go over to that fight, man. I ain't going to do a watch along for that. I'm going to go over to it. I'll do a watch along for this one, though. This one the weekend. I have a thumbnail already for it, so we good. Plus, he's a southpaw, same as WBO belt holder. Catrell has the look of a guy who is stylistically a bit of hell for Josh Taylor. Could be one of those Josh will never look decent against. Possibly. Very much so. Oh, Naz, every day of the week, man. Wilder would kill me. Every day of the week. Wilder would kill me, man. Hey was on, though, was 100%. Look at the pics of him. Wouldn't surprise me, truth be told. Hey didn't fake uh, the injuries. Some might say he strung Fury along doing that. But again, why would you string someone along for doing that when he can still have a career, but you end up missing, as near as makes no difference, four years of your career? It just That doesn't make sense, logical sense. Yeah, I've seen that as well. Una Healy, not a bother. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. Usek actually is a mobile fighter. He's very mobile. But I think that Fury just I think Fury has more in his arsenal. And I think Fury will win. Just in my opinion, Fury beats Usek. In my opinion. Uh Taylor can't do the weight. What you drink in a pint of gin, pint of water. I never drink gin. I never drank gin. My plan would be for AJ's next five comeback fight to be McKean, then White, then Valine, then Zhang, then Hergovich, and maybe Wilder Fury. Hmm. I would go. McKean, White, Valian, or maybe Zhang before Valian, and then Valian, and then Hergovic, and maybe then, yeah, fight for a title. And anyone notice there is no news? Yeah, I know, and I wonder why. I wonder why there's no news on that. I hope we get news on it, because I like the fight. I, I, I think Wilder wins, but I like the fight. I still want to see the fight. I want to see how it goes, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the bodybuilder AJ smashed Usek's face up. Fury will put Usek into orbit. And the bodybuilder still got bet. Yo, G Man, big up. Uh, I've wondered about Gasiev. Just disappeared after going to heaven. He fought. He fought Sepa Safiri's brother. And who did he fight then? He fought. Um, did he fight Wallace? Can't remember. Oh, super chat, man. Always read the super chat first. Chris Andre with the 10 quid. Thank you so much, my man. I appreciate that very much. So every little bit helps. Thank you for the 10 quid. I have to go, brother. Thanks for the show. If you're around tomorrow or the day after for an appearance, where'd that go? Um, oh, there it is. I thought it disappeared there. Uh, for appearance on my channel, um, let me know. I'll see Joe's availability too. God bless and take care. Chris, I'm free tomorrow. And the day after, if needs be, of course, always have time for you. And I'd love to make an appearance, man. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. Always have time for you, my man. And thank you once again for the 10 quid. I really appreciate that. It means an awful lot. G-Man, have you got uh, your tickets for the Yard Baturbiev uh, upgraded? Heard it's selling badly. Well, I don't have any tickets for it. Um, my hope is that I don't need tickets. Right? Worst case scenario, I'll buy one. But hope is that I won't. When are you and Ade doing? When are you doing that video with Ade? Um, hopefully this week. 
hopefully this week i'll send him a text and see is he free i know he'd be busy with talk sport and his own curtains are horrible they're not my they're not the ones i picked out mate I, i'm gonna be frank right i'm done until we see some actual stuff come out about it i'm just i'm not even gonna talk like midweek report tomorrow i'm not even gonna talk about it i'm i'm just i'm sick of seeing it at this stage i'm not even gonna talk about it i'll do midweek report tomorrow that won't be on it i'm just sick of it i don't want to until we see some actual evidence that he's in the clear i just don't care i really truly don't care i really don't thoughts regarding haney loma might happen yeah i'm looking for i hope it happens man i really am i hope that Loma, uh, loma haney does happen and just a quick one 101 in the build that if you could lads smash the old like button as well 50 likes try and get the likes up help your boy out because the more likes you get the hell the more it starts recommending the channel so big help that would be salute to del boy aj should have a few comeback fights like lewis did after rack but problem is the zone won't allow it invested so much money and because he is still a cash cow at the end of the day like he still makes money so i think i said it in review of the week that lennox lewis he i big up to del boy every time lennox lewis was not making near as much money as anthony joshua you know he wasn't generating as much money to panis Eliades and people like that at the time so they could take the easy road and have some comeback fights you know like he did after i think you mean after um mccall not rackman um because he didn't need a comeback fight for rackman and you know just come back that way but with lewis or with aj it's not as simple as that aj may have decided to retire anyway the idea uh with boot was to retire by 30 he already carried on two years longer so no cost in string and fury along and again the point i'm saying to you is which you keep missing is why would he retire and then come back if he didn't need to you know why would he retire for those years if there wasn't a reason and again during the time he was retired what do you expect him to be in hard training camps no his body couldn't get through a training camp when he started doing them so again you know you're saying to string fury along i'm it wasn't nice for him and i'm sure in a way fury would have felt strung along but it was legit injuries like there's no ifs or buts the guy was clearly unable to get through a camp even then so to keep going on and say like oh it was strung along strung along look i've no doubt in my mind that david hay would have fought fury and personally if he'd have been 100 percent, i still don't think he would have beaten him david hay i think fury would have won but i've no doubt that if the fight had gone ahead and david hay was 100 percent, he would have fought needs four or five fight back yeah I, i'd say about four can't help but think Eddie will rush him. Well, the zone, a lot of people are eating off the zone. A lot of people are eating off Asia, I should say. So, yeah, mentally shot. What a mistake. It did surprise me because it was like, I know, it was just like they were putting so much stock in him winning, you know? Thoughts on Dan Aziz in domestic fights. I like him against Lyndon Archer, maybe Richards. Do you know what? Dan Aziz is, is impressing me more and more with each fight. I wouldn't mind seeing him against Richards or Lyndon Archer. Gee, man, I'll have a fiver now with you that Usyk beats Fury. I will take that fiver, man. I will send it to you on PayPal, but I'm going with Fury to beat Usyk on points. I think Benavidez wins the fight. It's as simple as that. I think Benavidez beats him. I think he probably stops him. I think KSI versus Tommy Fury could be a competitive fight, uh, which I think KSI could win. I don't really rate Tommy Fury. He uh, He's always really inactive. What do you think? Well, I don't really rate... Like, I think Jake Paul looks better than KSI, truth be told. KSI looks all right, but I think Jake Paul does look more... He looks to have a bit more talent there. <sighs> Man, don't. Pricey. Man, we don't want to see poor Pricey get... No. And Pricey's retired, man. Yeah, like, I, again, I'm so done with that until we see some actual stuff come out, real stuff come out. I just don't care. As I said, I'll do midweek report tomorrow. I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm literally going to ignore that post. I'm just so... I'm doing, post whatever you want, say whatever you want. I don't care. Until we see from UCAD, I don't care about WBC, until we hear from them, I really don't give a you-know-what. I'm, I'm done wake me up when we get there i meant mccall yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i know um yeah they needed to do that mate they really did that's my time yeah I i'm just done 
I'm done. I know the videos still do good numbers, but it just bores the arse out of me now at this stage. I'm just done. Until we hear from you, Cat, or someone like that, I'm just, with regards to that, I'm just done. I did, I did like that, though. I did like that. I did, I did find that amusing. Uh, but still clear to fight. Looks, but I'd say Ben will fight in Australia, to be honest with you, because he's out there training now. So I'd say he'll fight in Australia. AJ will get um, Franklin McKean and White as his rebuilding. I'd say he probably, like, I'd say it's probably going to be Franklin, to be honest with you, because McKean is kind of seemingly out of the running, and then White in the summer. I think he needs more than that. Um, Wilder, definitely. Lamont Brewster was, look, Lamont Brewster was not that good. In my opinion, Lamont Brewster was never really that good. Lamont Brewster. Chav Clark. I don't rate Chav Clark, to be honest with you, man. I really don't. I've just, I've never really rated him. Oh, what? I remember actually someone saying that as well yesterday. Franklin's promoter. Isn't he Salida? Now, I know Dimitri Salida said, right? When was it? It was back when I think White was fighting Franklin that Valine was one of the leading contenders. I wonder would they spring that up? You know, for me, I don't... Against Valine, right? I've no doubts that AJ could beat him. No doubts in my mind AJ could beat him. But I don't think he'd look good doing it, if that makes sense. I think he'd fight out of a lane and he'd probably just look a bit meh in winning. And you might have people actually saying, oh, he didn't look good and I think AJ might be done. And I, I think that yeah, it might actually do worse. It might have him kind of think like, oh, am I done and thing and what? Said it on Boxing Media King. And shout out to Boxing Media King, by the way. They've been doing some great work lately. I've been... Watching a lot of their videos more than I've been watching. Well, I don't, I'm not subscribed to IFL, but I don't really watch. I'm watching IFL interview if it's something I'm interested in. But Boxing King Media have been doing some great work as of late. Big up to those guys. If Benavidez can make 168 for much longer, could you see him versus Bivol? Like, I, I think Benavidez could make it a good bit longer, but he's very ill disciplined, as we know, with Dave Benavidez. I think you could probably make. 168 for a while longer yet, yeah, but he is just so well disciplined and we've seen him several times, you know, outside of camp, you know, drinking, getting into trouble, you know, about what. And yeah, I, I don't know. Benavidez, I think that he's probably going to move on 175 anyway because he is getting older. You know, he's in his late 20s now, so he's probably going to fill out naturally, but um, I don't know. I wonder if AJ's punch resistance might have deteriorated somewhat as well. Waleen isn't a lethal puncher, but I could see him hurting AJ. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule out an upset. Hmm. Um. I wouldn't be picking him for an upset. Put it like that. But would I rule it out? Probably not. No, I wouldn't rule it out. But I certainly wouldn't be picking him. Put it like that. I'd be saying AJ wins, but I wouldn't rule out an upset. No. What did you think of the Tottenham Hotspur incident with the fan on Sunday? I think the security has to be a lot better. One thing I would say, the boxing security does still need to be better. I didn't see it. Like, I watched the match, but I didn't see what the issue was. I was, I was out with my friends watching that match on Saturday. Um, but I didn't see what the issue was. So you might have to jog my mind on that. Hearn got a uh, foam. Foam? Form. Uh, we're promoting loads of AJ fights, but produced one a year. A big up to Roland with punches. G. Will you L? What do you think Eddie Hearn should? Um, or what do you think Eddie Hearn should do to regain his popularity in the UK again? Um, I think that. He needs to basically get more fighters on his books, more English fighters on his books or UK based fighters on his books, as well as a couple of American. But I think that losing, like, Laurent Richards has left. And to be honest with you, I don't really, Laurent Richards has done nothing since he left Hearn, but he's a good undercard filler, as is guys like a Coley and people like that. So, you know, you kind of need those guys, if you know what I mean. And I think you need more, more like that. But at the end of the day, Where's the next big star going to come from for any fighter? Because Fury's not going to be around forever. 
Um, Eubank's not going to be around. Joshua's not going to be around. He needs a star. I think they all need stars, all the promoters, really. And where is it? Where is it going to come from? Who is the next big star? And who will get him? I think Frank Warren has him in Moses Atuma, but that could be a while off yet. Uh, would you be getting the undisputed boxing game? I don't see. I'm not really. I don't really game that much these days. So I probably will, but I don't really game that much these days, mate. But if it's a boxing game, I probably will buy it. Yeah, probably. G man, who do you think wins? In new way versus Lara? Probably in new way. Just more accurate than Lara, and just a better fighter. But if a new way, I mean. He's been rocked by... New Way has a good chin, though. I mean, he always rocked by the Nair, but that's the Nair at 118. I've still never seen uh, a fan being able to get out of a seat and trying to jump into the ring. For example, if they didn't like a fight or didn't like a decision for a fight. Yeah, security is on point for that kind of thing in boxing, to be fair. You never see it, and thank God you don't see it, but um, security in boxing is normally on point for that kind of stuff you never tend to see it in boxing they're normally quite good with that kind of stuff they're normally quite good how long are we going 56 minutes done well tonight haven't we 56 minutes going well so i'm gonna go for probably another five minutes or so 82 of you guys in the building smash the like button if you haven't already please do 63 likes i'm just trying to get it up to 70 likes because um help you boy out with the algorithms the rumor of Eddie Hearn and Sky Nicholson is just a rumor. Um, oh my God. If it's a rumor like that, that just looks to be just fabricated, I ain't going to say anything. I'm gonna talk. It just for me, that just looks like a rumor. That's all it looks like. I have no thoughts on it. It just looks like a complete another rumor. Someone started, to be honest with you, mate. If Fury can sell out uh, Wembley with a record 94,000, 6,000 at Tottenham, this is all on Fury. So has Usyk the balls to ask for 50? Well, as I said at the start of this, and I've seen from August last year, it was agreed on 50% each, 50-50. So if they're going to pull the goal... Now look, I, I agree that Fury is the bigger name out of the two. He is. But lion share? What, what does he mean by lion share? What's Bob Aaron mean by that? If you're talking 70-30, nah, man. If you were talking, say, 55-45, I'd say, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. If you're talking anymore, even 60-40, it's like, hmm. Um, I would say she probably does. She probably does. And the reason why I will say that is because, as I said several times, in Ireland, she's just loved by everyone. They will flock to Crow Park just to see her. Many of them don't even watch boxing. I mean, I've seen loads of people who say they don't watch boxing, just Katie Taylor. Many of them will flock to Crow Park. I wouldn't be surprised if she did. I'll just be frank, she's loved in Ireland. Like, you cannot meet anyone who doesn't love Katie Taylor. Over here, she's absolutely idolised over here. Hearn should have signed Ben Whitaker. A Cody leaving isn't a great loss financially, no offence. Yeah, I don't... Sky said they're going to make him the face of boxing. I don't know how that's going to work. Um, don't know why Sky were so aggressive in their purchase. Nor I. And, and again, I've said it once, I'll say it again. I find the whole Ben Shalom thing strange because it's like, you know, the way he's come in and just instantly everything, you know, the big budgets and the shows. For me, it, it's a bit strange. You're kind of looking at it like, even Eddie, Eddie Hearn didn't get that when he joined with Sky. He didn't have, he was doing Price Fighter. You know, it took a couple of years before he was able to get you know, to what Ben Shalom's at now with regards budget was. So it, I find the whole Ben Shalom, and Ben Shalom, like, with Eddie Hearn, right, he inherited it from Barry, but Matchroom was a known quantity. I mean, Ben Shalom, I never heard of him until Frank Warren mentioned him in, what was it, May or April 2021. I had never, I had to look up who he was. And I was like, oh, he only put on a couple of shows, and they were the boxer shows. And I was like, this guy's on Sky? I was like, how, how did he swing that? Mental. One of my favourite fighters to watch at the minute is Adam Mazim. Yeah, that's a great one. Actually, that's a great show. Adam Mazim. Adam Mazim is, is very, very good. In my opinion, he'd be a future world champion. Pay-per-view star. What's your opinion? How far can he go? I'm very impressed with Adam Mazim. He looks a level above. The, well, I would no disrespect to Charlton, but I'd say he's probably English level. 
English level. Who set the throne? AJ, the biggest heavyweight cash cow of the last five, uh, six years. Beat him twice. Beat him twice. Ben Shalom's dad is a very rich man. So is Barry Hearn, though. You know, Barry Hearn is rich, too. It's not like, you know, Eddie came from, you know, a poverty background, had to work his way up. Barry Hearn's rich, too. So Ben Shalom having a rich dad, that really shouldn't make a difference. That's a good question. I think we'll see who's going to be commentating on this fight. Hmm? Will Adam Smith be commentating on the box? And it's interesting because he said he'd be back in the new year. So let's see what is happening with Adam Smith. Let's see. Is Ben part of the tribe? That's a good one. I never heard him hint or make a reference to it. So God only knows what Ben Shalama's tribe is part of. But um, it regards Adam Smith. If he's on this show, it'd be interesting to see. Interesting. I don't know what's happened to him. I really don't. Um, you know, he's not been seen on a Sky show for a while now. And look, I've never really looked. If I don't have to listen to Adam Smith on commentary again, I won't be crying for that. I certainly won't miss him. But it is interesting to know what's gone on there. I, I did hear rumors back in the summer about him and Shalom and stuff like that. Back, back in the summer. But, um... Again, like if he's gone from Sky and not commentating, I personally won't lose any sleep over it. I never really liked Dennis Smith, truth be told. But it's just interesting to know where he's gone. You know, I, I, one thing I will say, he is passionate. You can tell he loves boxing. He is passionate about it. But um, yeah, me personally, I certainly wouldn't be losing any sleep over um, Adam Smith not being part of Sky anymore. That's that. All right, people, so we've gone just over an hour mark there. I'm going to call time on this. I got the hour in, and it worked A-OK, -okay, no issues. So hopefully we'll get another live in this week, hopefully with a guest. Um, if not, I'll catch you live on Saturday. Go live in about half eight for the watch-along for Eubank versus Smith. I'll catch you then, people. There's 80 of you in the building still, if you could, on the way out. Smash the old like button. Hit subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. Thank you to everyone who's been part of the stream this evening. I appreciate it. I, I had good fun. I enjoyed it. I want to give a massive shout out to Chris Andre with the 10 quid. Appreciate that every single time. The 10 quid, that's a, that's a nice little help. Nice little help. Goes a long way. Every little bit helps. So, people, i leave you with that. Hope you all enjoy it. Smash the like button on the way out, of course, if you could. Hit subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. For now, people, I'll talk to you. My talk to you this evening might be tomorrow morning or tomorrow evening, one or the other, whichever way we get it done. For now, I'll talk to you. Peace.